Edna Mode. End guest. Hello everyone. Welcome to another video with me, Stephanie Canada, the owner of Backroom Finds. Today we're going to be discussing a topic that I get asked a lot. What do you do with patterns that are missing pieces, or maybe the pattern is complete and comes with extra pieces that don't belong, or a pattern is so woefully incomplete that you don't really know what to do with it? A quick Google search will show you hundreds of Pinterest-worthy photos of what to do with these items, including, but not limited to, flowers, wrapping paper, decorations on bracelets, trays, and many, many more. For all of you out there, I have one word for you. No. No, no. No, 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 no. And some more. No. Now, this is just my opinion as a sewing pattern purist. If this isn't your cup of tea, feel free to click away. I have many other videos that show you how to do crafty things with destroyed things. No big deal. No skin off my nose. But if you are curious, come along with me and I will show you what I do with them. Your first and most obvious, at least for me, is to put them somewhere and save them for later. Now, I asked one of my favorite Facebook groups, which is called Vintage Sewing Pattern Nerds, what they do with them. There was one resounding answer, which I'll get to in a second, but there were lots of little ideas along the way of how to deal with these missing pieces. One person even goes so far as to put them all on Evernote and then labels them in Evernote the day she found them, makes sure that all the pieces are together, marks what they are, and keeps them so that way should she ever start sewing and find a pattern from the same time frame as to when she bought them, she can pull them out and see if the missing pattern piece is in that bag. That is a level of holy organization that I aspire to. A little bit of truth time with Stephanie. Uh, I wish I could say that up until <coughs> last week, I was better at organizing and keeping all these together, but it took me doing this video to finally push me into properly organizing my missing pieces. So there's that. Here's a little before photo. Yeah, I know. It's a giant mess. And honestly, a lot of the responders on the group were telling me the exact same thing, that this is pretty much what theirs looks like too. So I don't feel as bad, <laughs> but I needed to step up my game. What I opted to do was to use all the very empty binders lying around my house from either previous shows or just people give them to me. I don't really know why. I'm a stage manager thing. Office supplies just flock to me. So I decided to use all of these tools to organize my missing pattern pieces. And what this entails is I made a binder for unprinted patterns, which are going to be the most mysterious overall, because you have no idea what company they've come from. A lot of the times, if you're just starting out, you really don't know what pattern piece you're even looking at, which is totally fine. But giving yourself a good basis to go back and find these pieces is always a good plan. Another trick that you really want to take into account is if you do buy a very large box off of eBay, which was the very first video I chose to show you guys on this channel. I'll put a link down below if you want to go see where I started versus where I've come to. Yeah, I'm sorry for the audio and the lighting and the shots. But hey, anyway, here we are. So when you acquire a large box, either from an estate sale or from eBay, my main recommendation is to keep them all together. Don't let a pattern with a missing piece go somewhere else. Because what normally happens is in these boxes, these ladies that had owned them before or the people that had had them handed down to them, they typically kept them all together. And if you had a pattern piece, say a sleeve that you really liked from this pattern, but you want to use it in this pattern, you're going to actually shove the said piece that you used into the incorrect envelope, which means that you probably have the other pattern lying around somewhere missing a sleeve, 
which happens a lot. So you want to keep all those together so that you can eventually marry them back the way they came. The other thing that was told to me was sometimes sellers just choose to leave the rogue pattern pieces in the patterns, which is also a valid choice because that means that the previous owner went through and made sure that that piece fits so well with the garment they were making that it was possible to just use that piece in this pattern. So you get a handy little bonus. Now I'm going to show you what happens and how I catalog a missing piece when I find it. All right, folks, these are the two binders that I'm going to give you a brief tour through to show you how I organize my missing pattern pieces. This is the inside of my unprinted missing pattern pieces binder. The first page is the bodice pieces that I found. This is my original idea for my layout. You'll see in the McCall's book that I change up the formatting just a little. I chose to use the date added child or adult piece best guess because since they're unprinted there's no guarantee that you can know what they are and if they are numbered or lettered and if you're pretty sure they go with something else what i opted to do was to create a bodice lettered page protector and a bodice numbered page protector what this means is that since i'm using top ended meaning that they open from the top page protectors I have to be very careful when I am putting this away because they could all fall onto the floor like they did the first time I tried to put it away. Yeah, that was fun. Now I'm going to show you how I put a missing piece into the binder. So what I have here is a piece labeled E and that is definitely going to be a belt of some form. Now, because I didn't want to have 25 different sections in my binder, I opted to create a small bits folder, which to me is belts or the little belt loops, etc. Now you can see I am to my small bits folder where I've got stays, waistbands, a cuff, a collar, question mark, meaning that I have no idea what it is. So I opted to put it in the small bits as opposed to the cuff and collar sections, because those are for me easier to see. And you can see it also has another belt here. So we're going to add my letter E here. It is 420. I'm guessing it's an adult size because it looks like to be a pretty big piece. It is some kind of belt. Mm. Or it could be a waistband. Don't judge my handwriting, I'm trying to write at a weird angle. I see you. And what letter it is? The letter E. Since it's lettered, it's going to go into the small bits lettered section. And that is how I put away a missing pattern piece. Now to show you the difference, this is my McCall's binder. The nice part about McCall's is that they have printed most of their pattern pieces for the entirety of their existence. I have never found a McCall's pattern that is old enough to not be printed on. Now, they might exist, but I haven't found it. So here you can see the very first one I have is bottoms, which I'm saying is like trousers, shorts, not skirts because those are in a whole other category. So here you can see I found one on 418, child, size six, trousers back and front. There were no numbers or letters. And thankfully, because McCall's is awesome, it goes to pattern 5251. And there they are. And their bottoms, sh sh ignore the, I was running out of labeling tape, so I just left the uh, spelling error there. I updated my spreadsheet for this version to include a notes section, which for me is going to be tears, if they go with other pieces, or in this case, what number they are. And that's what I do with missing pattern pieces that are by themselves. What I do for patterns that are missing only one piece or two pieces, but are in their envelope and mainly complete, is this. I will put them in one of my acid-free protective sleeves. And here you can see I have another cheat sheet. And this one will have what era it's from, when I remember to put it in, whether the instructions are there, 
and in this case the instructions have a one inch tear. How many pieces, so for this one has 10 of 11, which means it is not complete, and it is missing number seven, the sleeve. I also like to note if there's any damage to the pieces, that way people can know what they're buying when they buy from me. I do like to be upfront with all of my buyers. What I do for these type of patterns is I leave them in the protective sleeves with the sleeve open so that if I find it, I don't have to worry about this little adhesive strip here catching. And I have a couple bins of which I put them all in by pattern maker and then I make sure to order that and organize them by number. That way I can find it easier should I actually come across this one's sleeve. But Stephanie, I don't want to catalog all the pattern pieces. That's okay. I actually don't do it a whole lot either because I have a very dear friend of mine that takes them all off my hands for me. And by takes them off my hands, I mean she does the work of collecting missing pattern pieces from around the country to eventually put them back together again. The name of her company is Vintage Sewing Pattern Catalog Galleria. I will provide the link to her website down below so that if you have missing pattern pieces lying around your house, please send them to her so she can put them all back together again. I give you this website because I have sent hundreds of pattern pieces her way. This binder system that I showed you is a very, very new to me because I don't normally have the time or patience. I have a five-year-old. Yeah, I don't have time for that. I wish I did because it does make my soul very, very happy to put them all back together again. It really does. But most of the time, uh-uh. I don't got time for that. Bottom line, if you don't want to deal with organizing and keeping all these pieces, please, I beg of you, just send them to her. She is wonderful to work with. Contact her through her website. She's a wonderful person and will try her best to put all the pieces back together again. And occasionally I get lovely photos of patterns I've completed, which is extra awesome because I completed a super rare 1920s. Yeah, I think it was 20s lingerie pattern, which I completed by sending her transfers I didn't want to deal with. And I get to feel good about myself. But, but, but Steph, I really want to craft. Cool. I'm all for crafting. That's perfectly fine. Let me introduce you to two mind blowing technologies in this endeavor. So you have a front cover of a pattern that you really want to cut up into a paper doll. Cool. Let me introduce you to this thing called a color copier. It does the same thing without destroying the envelope. But I want to make the pattern pieces into flowers. Great. It's called a color copier and tea dyeing. If you feel so strongly that you have to craft the things, you'll never get me to condone that basically. But I'll give you this disclaimer. If you craft anything pre 1950, I'm gonna come for ya because those are very hard to find. K? K. Honestly, guys, if you find some patterns from the 80s and the 90s, confessions of a pattern seller, I don't care. Sure, go for it. McCall's multi-size from the 80s and 90s, those boxy jackets that everyone wore to work because they thought they would have them taken seriously. Some of you are gonna come at me and say, but it was my grandmother's pattern and it makes me feel better and fine. If it's sentimental to you, Go for it, okay? I'm not actually going to come at you. That's me being sassy. But I just ask that if you're doing it to sell them on places or if you're trying to repurpose and reuse, I know this sounds weird coming from me because I am that girl if you've watched any of my other videos, but please just don't. <laughs> and if we're being really honest, long before I started this whole endeavor, I must confess, I too crafted with sewing patterns. 
I made notebooks from beautiful 1940s patterns that I didn't have all the instructions to. But I have gotten smarter, and you too can learn from my mistakes, friends. Yeah! All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, go ahead and click that like button. And if you want to see more from me, go ahead and click that subscribe button. You can turn on that bell for post notifications so you can know as soon as I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching. See y'all next time. You be weird with me. I'm always weird with you. That's not even a challenge. Google, 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 Google. <laughs> now, I'm a vintage sewing pat showing, 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 sewing, 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 shopping. If this isn't your bag of cheese, that's not a thing. Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Thank you. Wow, tea spilled everywhere. <laughs> now I asked one of my favorite. Why can't I? Favorite Facebook. Favorite fa- Double Fs. And there was one resounding... Ooh, hello, Bert. Now I have to find the post. Two. One. Yes, ma'am? So. No. And. Ned. Not helpful. <sighs> Gonna drink this before it hurts. Edna Mode and guest. Yes, I was waiting a long time. To do